Hello guys, welcome to 3 Max News for the month of September. A lot of things to cover this month, let's just start with Forest Pack 9.3. The biggest improvement here is the Forest Ivy. Now, with wind animation added to branches and leaf, you have multiple controls to add wind globally or individually. Branches now can be tapered towards the tips. The base lines that you can draw, you can extend it easily now, before it was not possible. Forest Scatter got some updates as well. Now a distribution image can be interpreted as a density map instead of a bland, uh, black and white mask. So now you can use the grayscale values to control the density of your distribution objects. And while creating paint areas, now you can switch between paint and erase with a shortcut, so making it easy. Or Natrix released version 9, we saw it already some sync peaks uh, last month, now it's officially here, now with curved sinks for more precision, brush textures to paint on your hair, root warping, merge blending, clamp manipulators directly on viewport, interactive braiding, group meshes and way more. like hair textures, curve extensions, improved hair display on viewport, channel data visualization, making the popular hair system plugin for 3ds Max even better. Meows released Layer Estates and is a pretty useful one for big projects. When you got a lot of layers that sometimes it's a mess, we can now just use tabs. This way you can organize much better your project as it, as it gets bigger and bigger. You can rename, delete and rearrange tabs. You can assign background and text colors to each tab to differentiate between each other. It's a very simple tool but that can be super handy, it costs 10 euros. Imaginary released a lot of different plugins. The first one is a Scene Linter Pro in an open beta. It allows to define a set of roles to validate your scene before rendering. Basically, it's a sanity check of your files, checking that there is no missing textures, that all geometry is renderable. You can customize it for whatever you want. Material Asset Browser is also on open beta, is a powerful and flexible material library manager for 3ds Max, supporting Material X and renderers like Octane, Redshift, FStorm, Vray, Arnold and Corona. It comes with a Material X workflow creating material libraries from MTLX files, a matcap generator, converting any image file into a ready to use matcap material. And another one from Iman Shirani is a powerful collection of OSL nodes for creating 2D and 3D shapes, patterns and textures directly within the 3ds Max Slate Material Editor. It basically brings the power of sign distant fields or SDF inside the Material Editor in 3ds Max, so super cool. You get different primitive and you can transform them in any ways with all types of combinations like adding, subtracting or smoothing and blending shapes together with procedural tiling and repetition, displacements. Ideal to create all types of ornaments that you need to, that you need to be procedural. Chaos Vantage 3 Beta is ready, brings USD and Material X support, also Gaussian splats and volume rendering, object clustering for the scattering system, multi sub text support and view rate to two-sided text support and other interesting features, you can download it for free if you are on the beta. Flag Visuals presented Dome Maker to create high quality renderers using an HDRI image. You have a video by Jonah Noel showcasing very well how simple it is and some of the impressive features that it offers. You get the usual color adjustments, light intensities, uh, warm, exposition and an HDRI browser but also allows to switch seamlessly from V-Ray CPU and GPU, multiple ground options like projecting the HDRI image on a floor, add colors on the floor, reflections and even adding water puddles with one simple click. 
tour and switch easily from multiple cameras and way more. This tool costs $30. And if you need HDRI image, we got a new website and it's called openhdri.org. So far, 11 HDRIs are ready, but they are great with multiple resolutions up to 29K, uh, 32 bit textures, and they will keep adding new ones in the future. So if you want great quality HDRI images, check this one. The links are in the description of the video. And Tickworks updated this famous Max script to create read books in just one click. Now it's version 3.5, adding support to the latest 3ds Max versions, fixing an old crash and freeze issues on the previous version. Now with an option to add noise for each page to add this vintage look, reset to defaults, and more animatable attributes, an optimized and easy to use expressions based page turn, shuffle, and multiple functions, and this tool costs 15 pounds. If you need a um, rig for a book, that's the tool that you need. Rapid Pipeline allows to import GLTF formats into 3ds Max in an easy way. Max natively can export the GLTF, but you cannot import. So with this tool, you, you fix this and can be the solution if you need it. It supports PBR materials integrated in Max and Maya and supports more than 70 different file formats. Avid Studio presented a new AI solution coming to 3ds Max called AI, AI Machine. You can switch between cloud-based models and local GPU models and compare them. You can apply style transfers. And so far we have only one video, but we will keep informing when we have a final product. Archbit Tools created Carpet Generator to create very fast different types of carpets or towels with displacements. This is free, very simple uh, script, but if you need to do a lot of them, it can be very handy. And they also updated or created a new curtains collection with pre-made animations. Each comes with two styles, regular and white, and with three different win options, light, medium, and strong. There's the option as well to warp any custom curtain you already own to these animations. All come with 360 loopable frames, and they are alembic files, so you can import to wherever, but if you need some plug and play animations of curtains, that can be the solution. On my Patreon this month, if you go to collections, you have the type flow for Arbit tutorials that is now totally free. You have six tutorials covering this project that you see on the background and yeah, different things in type flow, how to create these different types of things. I uploaded my Spanish course for thinking particles with more than 20 tutorials to YouTube. You can find the link on Patreon with the first four tutorials or five totally free. The other ones you, you need to subscribe to Patreon. And uh, now they come with an automatic voiceover to English. Uh, it's based on AI, but it works pretty well. So if you need to listen it in English, because it originally was in Spanish, now you can do it. I create multiple other tutorials for all the Patreons there as how to apply materials randomly, but based on a distance using data channel modifier. And we have the final two talks that I did at SIGGRAPH showcasing how to add detail to a house wall using 3ds Max modifiers for a totally procedural system. We have William Fiorentini that keeps doing cool stuff all the time, this time inspired by Cyberpunk using Forest Pack, V-Ray and Resolve. Simon Raid is an animator director and they launched his new company, Graphene Medical Animation, creating animations for medical visualizations using 3ds Max, Unreal and FStorm. Check it out. I don't know if they are looking for artists, but they are a 3ds Max based house. So cool stuff to see new studios opening up and having as a base software 3ds Max. Evgeny Prasolov is a freelance 3D artist and he showcased his last project at Boeing 737-800.
he rendered in Marmoset Toolback 4 an incredible, very detailed cockpit. Uh, yeah, you can see it on LinkedIn. Lucas Yu sharing his very cool animation for Expedition 33 for the character Dualist, 3D Max and Biped. Very cool animation. Nayan Bodawala shared on a stack group on Facebook very cool differential growth and reactions diffusion done in 3ds Max and Typeflow. Very cool inspirations for different motion graphics projects. And we have back Howie Day, now with Star Trek, I think it's Star Trek, or I hope so that it's Star Trek, with explosions and cool effects. As always, this is rendered in 3ds Max 2024. He's using V-Ray 7.2, GPU optics, he's using an RTX 4090 RTX and render times average around 4 minutes 40 seconds to 20 minutes 30 seconds per frame. Always cool to see projects by Howie Day. And Norberto Aguilera took the rigs provided by Make that we shared the past month and he started to animate them looking very cool on this short animation video. And uh, remember that you can also download all these models and rigs totally for free on 3dsmaxdepot.com. Remember the links on the description of the video. Boban created a very cool distraction and animation in Typeflow with a very cool twist transforming into a deforming character. Very cool stuff and we can see a making of. Tomoya Kimpara has a simple cloth test using Typeflow, but it reminds me that cloth, even simple, can create very cool results as we can see here, should revealing some objects that you have behind. Very cool stuff. And AJ Jefferies sharing this very simple but super cool loop animation done in 3ds Max and Typeflow, all the typical characteristic look of Jefferies. A uh, very stylish, recognizable look. Very cool stuff, as always. And on learning this month, we got Autodesk University, where we had some cool talks regarding using AI and OSL in 3ds Max, the power of CAD animation for video game character loops, and a talk about immersive experience. I'm not 100% sure. I think that you can have access to Autodesk University talks via subscription, but not sure. If you know, <laughs> tell me something on the comments. But Autodesk Media and Entertainment created a fantastic one hour talk with Paul Neal, or Paul Neal did a one hour fantastic presentation, covering a lot of stuff, but really a lot of things. Different tips and tricks in 3ds Max, working procedurally with the tool, using the stack modifier, using some new tools, um, covering animation, covering some old school fake physics, using flex modifier, a lot of interesting things by Paul, showcasing how you can work smarter in 3ds Max, doing things that can look very complex, but doing it very, very in a simple way. Totally recommend this talk, one hour, for sure you will learn something. I learned different stuff on this talk. The recording is in LinkedIn. And as always, I uh, keep telling, but the links on the description of the video. Also from Paul, you have how to create this procedural wire jumble with a bunch of modifiers, keeping everything procedural. Uh, also, very recommendable to check it out. You can always learn something from Paul. And by Anton Grevenkin, a very useful tutorial in how to rig characters in 3ds Max to add subtle generic motion in just minutes. The idea of this tutorial is how to create very fast some animation. Doesn't need to be perfect, but some stuff to add on the background to get some life on something that 
if not will be static. Pretty interesting stuff. And that's it for the month of September, I hope that you like it, a lot of things covered. And thanks a lot to all my Patreons allowing me to do this. All the time I try to offer a lot of tutorials. This month uh, we got between the courses in Thinking Particles and Type Flow, we get over 30, 25, 30 tutorials there. Some of them for free now. So check it out and thanks a lot to all of you that keep until the end watching the video. Remember that love any comment, likes, subscribe, these type of things. Thank you guys and see you soon. Bye.